to practice tolerance and, you know, sometimes, um, as not sometimes, as brahmacharis, that was that we were asked to take cold showers in the morning. It's a, I think it's an Ayurvedic thing to wake you up and like that. And it's healthy. But it was kind of like when you do it, it's like, Aham Brahmasmi, I'm not the body, I'm not the body. Okay, turn it on. You know, it's like you could go in that consciousness, it was a practice. But... You start liking it, though. What? Yeah, you could. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Yeah. No. That's my. That's my. <laughs> Attraction and repulsion. You should be detached. Yeah. But but it's um. Quite fashionable nowadays, and a lot of people are like getting kind of proud because of that. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, it's Healthy. Less of an austerity and more like something to like yeah, wear as a badge. Yeah. Well, you know, anything, any austerity you do, you could wear as a badge. So that just like totally mm. disrupts the whole point of it. But. I have noticed that there are some devotees that they really like to do austerity. Like, you know, they like to get up really early and chant a lot of rounds in the morning or, 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 or just do something that's difficult. They actually like it. It's like, it's like because they feel so good when they do it. So that's nice. And I think that's, that's something like, like, when I travel, sometimes it's austere. And so, you know, people say, how do you do it? And I say, like, well, you know, when I'm at home in Alachua, there's less austerity. Because I'm not, I just, like, go from my house to the temple, to my office, there's nothing. I mean, you know, there's always some austerity, but nothing great. But when I travel, there's more austerity, so it's, I, I think about it, I go, you know, I kind of like it because it's purifying, you know, it's like, but you have to st- this house to that house, and this bed to that bed, you, sometimes you wake up, you don't even know what country you're in. I, I woke up in South Africa once, and I thought I was in Canada. <laughs> I walked into the temple, and I thought for like a minute that I was in Canada, because it looked like a, you know, it's like, you know, or you ask any sannyasi who's traveling, do you ever wake up and not, know where you are and I'll go yeah because it's like <laughs> you yeah. she has that so um, so some people will look at that and they'll say they might say you know that's really difficult and they'll say yeah it's difficult but I feel the purification of the austerity because it's a sad because I you know it's like it's, it's austerity is like I wouldn't really do this if I had a choice because it's difficult but I'll do it because I think it's good. I think it's helpful. So I'm going to do it. So I, so I do the difficult thing because I think it's purifying. But otherwise, otherwise I wouldn't do it. And so this concept of doing something for spiritual purification, none of us like, had that idea. At least I didn't. At least my generation, it was like, um, you know, the idea of go to the Himalayas, sit on a rock in the Ganga and meditate all day, you know. That's an austerity, right? Or... Vipassana, that's austerity, right? Meditate for 10 hours, watch your breath, don't speak for a week, whatever, yeah. So there is this concept of austerity as purification. So by conditioned nature, we don't like austerity. We like comfort, isn't it? Wow, this chair is really comfortable. I really like it. Where can I get one? This sweater, wow, so soft. Oh, Where'd you get that? I like to get one, you know, isn't it? Soft, comfortable. That's what we're made out of. God, I just got a new car, so smooth and comfortable, huh. right? In our house, we have a chair that I sit in and I chant and I read. It's so comfortable. Mm. I love it. Mm. Yeah. So. Um, when there's an opportunity to do some austerity, some undergo some physical or mental austerity for the sake of purification, we should look at it in a positive way. And if we can develop a, an attraction for it, it's nice. It helps us. Otherwise, you know, it's just like, what's the difference between us and everyone? We're supposed to be on a spiritual path and we're just comfort seekers. Yeah. That then you might find people who aren't on a spiritual path sometimes more austere, although they're not doing it for 
spiritual purification, but they may, you know, people realize the pleasure of austerity, otherwise why would you go camping? You leave your nice house, you can live in a tent and sleep on a yoga mat. You know, it's like, but there's some austerity there, so they, they're doing tapasya, oh, climb a mountain, that's a big tapasya. Surfing, it's a big tapasya, mm-hmm. yeah. The question, is it then also purifying if you do something like, not in Krishna consciousness, like vipassana or whatever, when one does it, is it good or is it like, because it's not like with the aim? Or? Depends why you do it. I can't say from experience because I never did vipassana. But um, I was telling a story last night and we were with um, Chitraleka and um, she said, oh, so um, Nilambar said, how did you become a devotee? So she told you her story. And she said, my parents took this course called Avatar and it completely changed their life. And when they came back from the course, they said, you should go to... In- no, and they, or they took some... They did that and they took some course in India. And they sent her to take that course. They said, you should take that course. She said, it totally changed us. And I said, oh, Avatar, I took that course and I know a devotee who kind of drifted away from Krishna consciousness. I don't think he drifted away permanently, but he drifted away enough that his practice has probably stopped. And somehow or other, I don't know why, he took the Avatar course and he called me because I was the one who brought him to Krishna consciousness. He said, I took this course called Avatar and I'm a devotee now again. It, you know, it's like, really? He goes, yeah, somehow or other, I needed to take that course to come back. It's like, interesting, right? So now you could say objectively, well, why would you have to take a course like that to come back? Maybe you would don't have to. But that's what worked for him. You can't argue with it, right? So it'll depend. It's not our process. You know, strictly speaking, we are we chant the Hare Krishna mantra. We don't just meditate on our breath. Mm-hmm. But but that process vipassana brings up all kinds of stuff. So maybe if that's the way to remove some obstacle, why not? You know, it would have to be informed by you know. Ideally, a devotee who's done it who could say, yeah, it's good or no. I'm sure some people go into trauma when they do that because they connect with... So you could come out worse also. Right? Yeah, that was in Australia. You, there's some trauma-informed psychologists and they deal with some devotees who did be past Oh, well, connected with their trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Dad, yeah, yeah. 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 The principle, the broad principle is, if this is going to help me in my bhakti, that's the first consideration. So if I I say yes, if I say yes, I know this can help me, then the next consideration, is this what I need to do? to get the help I need, or is there something more directly within bhakti? And you say, well, I tried everything, and this is a particular problem that's like outside the parameters of what bhakti is supposed to do for me, and I need to deal with it. So, everything, everything is going to depend on, the success of what you do is largely dependent on why you're doing it. Because if you do the right thing, like, I'm going to chant Hare Krishna, but I'm doing it to show off. So you did the right thing for the wrong reason. So it's not going to help me. And it's probably better I don't chant if that's the way I'm going to chant. Of course, you could say, well, just keep chanting. It'll, you know, you'll get purified. But there is a sense that you're just contaminating yourself by doing it. And then I'm doing something that maybe is not ideally perfect, like offering Krishna a banana peel, like Vidura did. But I'm doing it out of love. So I did the wrong thing for the right reason, and Krishna accepted it. So the motive is always important. And 
I have found if the motive is pure, you can always kind of figure out then if what I'm doing is actually good or not. Because once, once you know what my goal is and what my motive is, you're pretty safe. And if this thing is not working, you just pull out. Yes? The motive, the motive is to balance things out. Like, for instance, like um, uh, we had the retreat all days, like spiritual knowledge, and in the evening, we had like some comfort. We were sitting, we were sitting here on the couch, and we actually watched a movie, which was also called Avatar. Was <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that good as Bhagavatam? Uh, but to, to, to find the, the, the balance, all oh, the spiritual stuff, and then the... Oh, Prabhu, that was way too spiritual for me. Give me some ice <laughs> cream, I gotta come down. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's look at it like this. Let's look at balance like this. And um, if I... You know, it's actually... But, but as you advance spiritually, if this is the spiritual, the material is supposed to go down. So if it's always like, well, I went up today, i got to like bring this sense gratification to equal level. It's not exactly like that. It should be like, I went up today, so this should stay here. Technically, it should go down. But um, I do understand that for some people, they may get too much spirituality and they need a break. So it's not, you know, it's just like how you break and what you break with and how long you break with. There was a brahmachari, he was so funny. He, he would always say, you know, because this brahmachari is in the temple, you're like, you're pretty much engaged, like from 4 a.m. to 10 p.m. Because your sadhana is all morning. And then you take breakfast and you have service. And then if you're working with the deities, you have service all day and then you could be working with the deities at night. Then he used to say, and he was actually serious, more or less serious. He said, I need my one hour Maya break every day because this is way too intense. It's like if I don't get my Maya break in. So I would say, I would say rather than a Maya break, I would just say something else, which is also Krishna conscious. You know, it's like, you know, occasionally, like for me, when it's just like I hit the point of burnout, I'll just go in my studio and write a song. Yeah. And I know I'm going to use the song on my Shishastakam anyway, so it, it's still service, but I like to do that. So that's my Maya break. But, but I, take, I make my Maya break, not Maya. So that's better. Because, you know, it's like, why do you want to roll in the dirt after you take a bath? You know? So, you know. You know what I mean? So you, you want to do something. Say, okay, I'm not a pure devotee. I need A, B, and C. Satisfy it, but not satisfy it in a way you come back and you're like, wow. Now you're burned out from Maya. You know? Yeah. You have? I was just going to say, this kind of relates to what you were saying in another lecture the other day, where it's like, if you get here, you can actually bring yourself down. So perhaps the Maya breaks can actually just... Yeah, it's just, it's, it's just how you break, what you break with, and how you do it. At least that's my experience. You know, ideally, you know, like sometimes devotees will go out to a park, you know, we'll have a big feast and we'll hang out. We'll chill, you know. <laughs> so it's not like, oh, you know, we have this big festival and we're always busy and it's like, oh, Krishna, 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 Krishna. He says, too much Krishna for me. I need a... so, let's, so let's go out and just, you know, be friends and have, you know. So that's different than like, let's go to Disneyland and play a round of golf together and then, you know, you know, like that. So, you know, the thing is, okay, here's the answer. Sometimes it takes me a while to, mm -hmm. zzz, bing. Here's the answer. Everything we do, see, eat, think, smell, taste, affects us, right? So, I have to think of recreation or sense gratification, whatever you want to call it, in a way that will affect me positively, not negatively. Right? So, it's just like, hey, 
we got 10 gallons of ice cream. You know, that was a tough chopper retreat. Let's just finish it off. You know, it was like, well, how's that going to help, right? You know, maybe one gallon might help to cool you off. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I need, but I need this, but like, how am I going to be affected by it? So if I just, if I do this to like balance out, but I just rolled it in the dirt, like, what's the point? I just like, I got purified and I rolled in the dirt. Then I'm back to zero again. That doesn't make sense. So, um, so now sometimes I could get fired from ISKCON for saying this, but I'll take my chances. <laughs> Pause it. Sometimes, you know, there's a saying: you have to take two steps back to take two steps forward. So sometimes. You'll do something, like, like in Grihasta life, sometimes you'll do something which is not KC. Per, you know, you can't, like, what verse is that? Uh-uh. Well, we're going on a vacation. Well, oh, you're going to my airport? No. We're going to the beach, you know, or wherever you went. Where did you go? Mexico. We're going to Cancun? Can- yeah. We're going to Cancun, Mexico. Well, that's horrible anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um... You've been? Yeah. Oh. No, so, um, if you live in Lithuania, it's really nice. Yeah. Um, um, it's like, well, what are you going to do? Well, we're going to go to the beach and we're going to go swimming. And it's like, like why? You know? Say, because, well, my wife and I don't get to spend a lot of time together and it's good for the relationship. So we do it and it's like so helpful, you know. And plus, we're always working so hard to be able to work that hard. We need to just like decompress a little bit. So, so it has a functional value. So, okay, the beach is nice, the sun's nice, everything's nice, but it's not like this is the ultimate, you know, you know, we're moving to Cancun, this is it, you know, <laughs> threw it, I'm throwing my beads away in the ocean, you know, got my surfboard. There's no waves, there's no waves there, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like sometimes you, you do something and you understand that per se I can't really support it exactly in Shastra, but the consequence of it is like it actually helped me. You know? So it's like, okay. Especially when you have kids, you have to do this all the time because it helps them. You do things with them that maybe you wouldn't do personally. Um, so, or... Let's do this together. You know, so well, that seems kind of mundane. I said, yeah, but it's really good. Well, it's bonding. You know, like you say, let's let's. I want to camp out. You know, in this place. You know, and if you, if you, if you're with people and you go through some difficulty together, you get closer, isn't it? Or we're gonna get we're gonna get a boat and we're gonna take a cruise. You know, all all of us we're gonna go on this cruise for seven days. You know? So now we're all locked up together on this boat. We go to all these different ports together. We have all this experience together. So we're now we're closer. Yeah, we did Harinam and all the ports also. So some, sometimes you have to look at it that way. Because you always, you know, because everything you do is going to affect you. So you have to be careful. Every book you read, every song you hear, every movie you watch has some effect. Either good or bad or neutral. And... It depends on the consciousness you're in. Because I watch a lot of things because I want to be informed about what's going on in the world. Um, and I want to be... It's kind of like... <clears throat> I feel like in some parts of me there's a gap, an educational gap, because I really wasn't interested in school. And like there's things that I learned that I didn't learn. I just didn't pay attention. And I see sometimes in, it, it's necessary to fill in some gaps with some information or just be aware of how people are thinking and so on. So I'll watch, you know, this documentary of that. But after I watch it, it's, I don't feel like, oh, I'm so contaminated, you know, I watch this, you know. And I find, you know, the history of, like, materialism, it's so interesting, you know, Industrial Revolution, how that happened. And you see how, and you understand so much, and you can use it in your own life and in educating people. So, you know, I'm interested in it, but I, I always try to see, well, how would that help me? Or if you're a writer, you might want to read a book by, heaven forbid, God forbid, a non devotee, mm-hmm. a karmi, a meat eater. Oh my God. You're reading a book? 
You're reading that book? It's written by a meat eater. Are you crazy? <laughs> but you're like, this is one of the best writers you know, in the world. And by reading the book, it's like, oh, this is like helping me so much. Plus, it's like complete sense gratification if you're a literary person to read a book by a good writer. It's, you know, like good music, good art, you know. But it can be an inspiration. Um, so technically, you shouldn't. But if there's a motive and a benefit, it can satisfy that. And I just, you know, I, I read our books, but our books are not like this book. I just need to read this book. You know, this book is like, it's so well written. So I read it and I get inspired, right? You ever have that experience? You know? You watch, you know, you watch like 300 Krishna conscious plays and you're like, yeah, they're okay. They're okay. I just need to go on Broadway and watch a real play. You know, it's just like I want to see something really good. You know, but you're a devotee, so you watch it and you're thinking, oh, we should do something like that. You know, you're appreciating it. You know, and so something like that. And it's your nature. You're an actor or an actress, or you know. So sometimes it's like I need to do this. It's just you know. So you could imagine sometimes. I listen to music that's not kirtan because I'm a musician because I get ideas and inspiration. And it always inspires me for Krishna. It never inspired me to like, I'm going to go back out and try to become a rock and roll star. You know? <laughs> I, I, it's like, I'll get a wig, I'll do it, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'll get a facelift, you know, we're going to do it. It never, it never has that effect. You know? So it's like, I hear it and I go, ah, oh, that's so beautiful. We should do that for Krishna. And I get very inspired. And it also, you know, there's some satisfaction because I'm a musician. So it's like, you know, it's like if you're a good cook, sometimes I just got to go to this restaurant. It's the best restaurant in the world. You know, it's like, not that I do it every day, but it's like, you know, I'm so into cooking. I just want to taste how that, you know, what it, this is like, what good cooking is. So, you know, if you're a sannyasi, no, you wouldn't really do that. But it's a grihasta. As Prabhupada said, why are the Grihastas always in Maya? And he answered his question. Do you know the answer? He was joking. He was laughing. He Shama Sundar, why are the Grihastas always in Maya? And what are you going to say when your guru asks, tells you, asks you a question why you're in Maya? And Prabhupada said, because that is their constitutional position. <laughs> so Prabhupada was, you know, he was like recognizing it. So it's like, it's like, you know, that's the nature of it, you know. So, um, like, once my wife was in India, and she's watching this Indian movie, you know, like we're living in Vrindavan, and we've gone to Delhi, and she's like, like why are you watching that? She's like, this actress, she's so good. You know, you ever try to talk to someone when they're watching a movie? And it's like, what's that? <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, she used to be an actress, so it's natural, you know. She's like, I'm like, I'm like, all right, whatever. She's a good actress. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't light up, light my life up. The movie that your wife made is really good. Yeah. I was trying to get her to make another one. We're thinking about it. But it's like, it cost about $20,000 or something. Well, now it could probably be cheaper. But, um... She's like, watching a movie is like not about anything, like Krishna conscious. It's like, it's like yeah, but she's such a good actress. So it's like that, you know, it's like, and then she watches it and it's like, okay, it's over. She doesn't watch another movie for, who knows, that might have been the last one she watched. It's not like, so, as devotees, we always like, okay, I need to be Krishna conscious, and I'm me, so like, how do we do both? You know, but not like, I need to be Krishna conscious, so shop a retreat, 10 gallons of ice cream, shop a retreat, 10 chocolate cookies. You know, it's, that's, that doesn't make sense. It makes sense. It's like, what? I need sense gratification because I have a body, but I should satisfy that need in a way that doesn't impede my spiritual desire. And it doesn't destroy my desire to do austerity also. You know, so it's a balance. You had a question? Yeah. But, uh, I was just thinking, uh, is it like in, in case of Japa retreat and then, you know, we just 
wat uh, relaxed. But are we like tired from Krishna consciousness? Or are we tired just, you know, for like driving all day, sitting? I mean, with my, like bodily and mind things. Because... Are we... What was the question? Do we get... Is it normal to get tired from... No, like... Is it real bored? Like tired from Krishna consciousness? Or from like... Uh, austerities to... To like... Uh, how to say it? Like to practice Krishna. It depends on the person. I think it depends on the person. But, yeah, because it's like we were saying in the beginning, if you do too much austerity, then you're going to hanker for sense gratification. So you want to find that, that middle part. Obviously, you want it to be going more and more towards the Krishna part. So the middle, it's all shifting. The middle keeps shifting. Um, but you have to be... We have to be real which could be a dangerous word because we could use that as an excuse. You know. Rasika, how come you didn't get up till nine o'clock? You have to be real, Prabhu. <laughs> <laughs> we did a lot of dancing last night. You know, I'm tired. Yeah. I did eat four, 14 slices of pizza at midnight, so that did have something to do with it. So... So, I, I'll just tell you my personal experience, because you probably notice I do have a body, and uh, you know, it, it didn't descend from Krishna Loka, although some crazy people might think that it did. Not to my knowledge, it didn't. Did. So, I've had to deal with what we're talking about for 53 years. And so... My person, the way I deal with it, and this is totally intuitive and spontaneous, I don't even consciously think of it, but I can talk about it in reflection, that I think I've just programmed myself to automatically move towards Krishna in everything I do and know how to do that and know if, like, this is too austere and I have to go back because that, and kind of, okay, bring it down a little bit, a notch, because I'm not going to make it this way. But, but knowing that that's the way I'll make it, so take a step back. And it's just kind of like intuitive because the goal is Krishna. The goal is strong enough that I'll just know when it's too much or too little. You know, you'll just, you'll just feel it. That's not good. And when you go too much, it's like immediately, you're like, this is not good for my spiritual life. So if, if you're sensitive to your spiritual life, you'll feel it all the time. You just go, that's, that's, that's like, sometimes my wife will, will visit um, her family. And after a couple of days, she's like, I, I can't stay longer because it's affecting me. You know? And she'll, she'll, after like two, three days, she'll go, we have to go. And I go, really? She's like, I gotta get, I got, just, it's not, well, it's her family. It doesn't affect me so much. But, um, so it's like that, you know? So it's there, it's nice. Your mother lives by the beach. We, we go to the beach, this and that. Mm-hmm. Chen her around. But, um, well, it's like this. I like the beach. Let's go to the beach, get our umbrella and chair, and I'll read Bhagavatam. So it's something like that, you know, it's like, I need to, you know, it's like for me, if I don't see the ocean a few times a year, you know, you might as well commit me to the mental hospital, you know. It's like, where's the ocean? Take me, I have to see water, you know, because I grew up by it. So it's something like that, like, you know, or, I, or if you grew up in the mountains, the forest, I just need to walk in the forest every day to be normal. So it's like, okay, what's the problem? But, but what are you going to do when you're normal? Like watch TV all day? No, it's like now I'm balanced, I'm normal, I feel good, so I can employ that, that stability and that inspiration in my spiritual life. That's different than just doing it and, and just doing it to do it because it feels good. And then that would also prevent you from going too far, from, you know, well... Yeah, I did go to the beach to read Bhagavatam, but I actually ended up in the water all day. I kind of, you know, like that, that would prevent you from doing that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, it's like, I mean, yeah, like you said, you have this goal, yeah. and, it's, and you just feel it naturally, you know, it doesn't help your yeah. goal or not. Yeah. I mean, it's not just, you know, some mind thing you always you balance, you, know, you need like, to go. Deeper to, like, to use it. Yeah, you, you, 
if you if your goal is to be Krishna conscious, you kind of you'll just know which way to go. Now it's time for austerity. Now it's not. Now I need this. I just right. Especially in this age, where, where the one is grown up in the forest, one is grown up by the sea, and one is grown up with the TV. You know, like like this. <laughs> but, but then then we should like instead of watching a Krishna conscious movie then or something like. Right? Yeah. Right. Or watch a documentary where you can learn something that's of value to you personally or to um, understanding where the world's at, where people are at. You know, I was just talking to Nilambar. Um, in India, there's a university called IIT, where it's just like I think 2% of the students in India get into IIT. Or maybe 2% of the 2% that apply get in. It's like, it's up there. And they started, he said they, they got up to about a hundred universities where they were doing programs and every year 10 to 20, 30, 40, even 50 of those IIT, you know, big brain, highly intellectual, would uh, become devotees. It's like, like uh, Chitraleka said that she went... When she went to the Govardhan Eco Village, you know, all those guys are IIT grads. It said blew their. She said just like this guy's like you know an astronaut, and this guy's like a this and that. So I I would think based on my experience in America, I was thinking this can't last forever. Like society changes, it just can't last forever. And then Nilambar was saying it's not happening anymore. He said the students in India now they're just like the students anywhere in the world. They're not interested anymore. So, um, if, you, if you want to administer to the world, you have to know where it's going, right? So, sometimes, you, know, so you, you can watch something and go, this is interesting, I want to watch it. But how many videos have I watched on psychology and trauma? And there's like, lots. Why do I watch them? Because people come to me with problems. I'm like, how am I going to deal with this? I need to learn. You know what's going on, so that's different. You know, and I like it, and I like to learn, and I like psychology. So it's it's, it's good. It's a good combo, right? I like the beach, and I like to read Bhagavatam. Okay, good combo. So that's a better you know, it's a better position. I like to eat. Okay, prasadam, not at midnight, not fourteen slices at midnight. But. So um, as you become more sensitive to your spiritual advancement, you become more sensitive to how what you're doing is affecting you, where you don't, you don't always notice it until you notice it, if you know what I mean. Until you become aware, oh, this is not having a good effect, right? Like I was saying, in, in, with japa, maybe I said this, maybe I didn't, maybe it was implied, that when your japa is a little better, you become more conscious of when it's not better. But if it's always bad, there's nothing to compare it to. You know, it's dirty. A dirty shirt gets a little more dirty, you don't really notice. It's just another spot amongst a hundred spots. So, that's important. You know? So as soon as you're a little, you know, it's like Prabhupada told us, you know, go back to Godhead this lifetime, be Krishna conscious. So then I think, okay, well, how do I do that? And I go, I do it like shooting for the goal. So I shot and, you know, got up there and, you know. And so after a while you're like, okay, I think it's here. And you just have to like, okay, so now how do I do it from here? And you have to figure it, figure out. But as long as your desire is strong, then you'll always, you always, you know, you'll figure it out. Right? There are certain things, right, you need to eat, and if I take them away from you, you'll kill somebody, right? Isn't it? Like, I have to eat this every day. Or this is my favorite food. If I don't eat it, you know. There's some things like that, isn't it? And I have to see this person or do this, yeah. So that's okay, but but you do it in the right way. Yes. I have two questions. One of them is really related to this. It might get really personal. Okay. <laughs> like um, I've noticed it on other matajis while I was living in the temple, but I also notice it now really on myself that it might have to do something with like the past. You know that some people just didn't receive love from like their parents or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sometimes when I do too much austerity of any kind, like when I was living in the temple, it was like pure austerity most of the time. I feel like my heart is just closing. Mm-hmm. 
and it's sort of don't know how to compare it to anything else other than just I felt like a soldier with PTSD just going about my day, you know, in a sense. Yeah. So and I feel it like when we were having Do this, you do you think let me just ask you a question. Do you think it's because it's kind of like that was how you were trained, to like austerity is like the ultimate goal, and there wasn't a lot of talk about bhakti is about love and devotion? Or Maybe, I don't know. Or may, it might, might have just been because, you know, the Brahmacharya.